Good morning, everybody. So I'm here to tell you some stories that you can take home with you in your head. And if you tell them to other people, well, then you'll have them forever. And also, you'll be able to take home a book at the end of today. So my name is Nora Dooley, and I'm going to tell you some stories about cats and mice. This first story is about a lion and a mouse. So when I say lion, can you go rah? OK, he doesn't squeak. That's the mouse. He roars, right? Squeaking is not scary. And if you, when I say mouse, he goes squeak. So once there was a lion and a mouse. And they're in the same story. This is an old, old story that comes from Africa and then moved to Greece and then it's told all over the world. Once there was this lion who was a really messy eater. He liked to eat a lot and he would eat so much and he would leave all his food in his mane and on his paws. And after he ate a lot, he would fall asleep and he would snore so loud it'd be like this. Can you do that? He would snore so loud, but the animals in the jungle, jungle liked that because then they would know he was asleep. And when he was asleep, that meant that the little animals could wander around and not worry about being made into lunch. So one day, the lion had eaten a lot, oh, blom, 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 blom. and he got a lot of food all over his face and all over his hands and all over his mane, and he fell asleep and he was snoring. <laughs> And a little tiny mouse heard him. And she thought, this is perfect. I can go out and see what's going on. So she went crawling through the jungle and crawling through the jungle. And she saw that big old lion sleeping. He was snoring. And he was covered with food. And she thought, free food. That's what that is. That is free food right there. And so she went crawling, creepy, creepy, crawling, crawling, crawling over. And she started eating I'm not, I'm off of his paws. I'm not, I'm not. And then she started eating out of his mane. And she was crawling through his mane. And he was still snoring. But he woke up. And he didn't stop snoring. He just peeked open one eye. And he saw that little mouse. And he thought to himself, <laughs> that's dessert. That's what that is. And so she was creeping and creeping and eating and eating. And boom, he caught her. And he said, ha, ha, I'm going to eat you up, little mouse. And little mouse said, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Please don't eat me, please don't eat me. Tell you what, I would be your friend for life if you don't eat me. He said, friend for life. Now, if you thought his snore was loud, if you thought his roar was loud, his laugh was so loud, he went, ha, ha, ha. Can you do that? Ha, ha, ha. You're going to be my friend, you little, little pipsqueak of a thing, you. And little mouse said, yes, I tell you what, I'll be your friend, I'll be your friend, I'll be a loyal friend. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Ha, 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 said the lion. You're so funny. You know what? You are so funny. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you go. And boom, he threw the little mouse right out of his paw. It went tumbling, head over foot over head over foot, stood on its legs, and went running back to its hole and hid. The lion thought to himself, that is so funny. Well, a little mouse like that be my friend. That is like so funny. I don't need any friends. I'm a king of the jungle. Well, the next day, the lion was walking through the jungle, and he didn't know that some hunters had been there, and they dug a huge, deep hole, a hole so deep that a lion, if he fell in, could not jump out. That hole was not empty. That hole had a net in it, and the net was attached to a tree that was bent down, which was attached to a rope, which was attached to the net, and over that hole, they put little tiny twigs and little pieces of grass and little tiny leaves, nothing strong enough to hold a lion. So the lion was walking through the jungle the next day, and he stepped right on top of that hole, and boom, he fell in. He fell in, and the gnat went around him, and then it pulled him up, and the tree snapped up, and there he was hanging off of a tree in a net made of ropes, and he started to cry and roar. And if you thought his snore was loud and his roar was loud before, now he needed help, and he started to roar. Can you roar? Roar! Help me, help me, he called. Rah! Can you do it? Rah! And the more he struggled, the more tangled he got up in that net. And you know what? The more he roared, his little friend, the mouse, heard him. And she said, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's my friend. 
That's my friend. And she went running over, running over, running over. And she saw him hanging up in that net. And she said, don't worry, I got you. And so she went climbing up into that tree. And she went climbing down that rope. And she started to chew like a champion. Because that's what mice can do. <laughs> chew like a champion. Can you chew? <laughs> she chewed through one rope. <laughs> she chewed through another rope. <laughs> she chewed through a big knot. <laughs> she chewed through another rope. And another and another. And then, boom! That lion fell right out of that net on his feet, of course, because he's a big cat. And he said, well, little mouse, you were right. She said, I tried to tell you. A friend in need is a friend indeed. He said, that's right, my friend. And they were best friends from then on. And that's the story of the lion. Rawr. Can you do it? The lion Rawr. and the mouse. Squeak. Yeah, cool. So that's a story, like I said, that's been told for thousands of years. And this is another story that's been told for a really long time. Come on in, friends. We're just starting another story. Find a place to sit. Be comfy. You might want to sit like up the hill because it's sort of shady. I don't know. Wherever you're comfortable. Yeah, you're good? Okay. All right. So I'm telling stories about mice and cats today. Yeah, that's my theme. So, a long time ago, but you're going to have to wait for the, the, the cat to come in this one. A long, long time ago, they tell this story in India. They've been telling this story all over the world. It's a Jataka tale. It's over 2,000 years old. This story is about a little rabbit. And little rabbit was in the jungle, and she was eating, nibble, 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 her big old ears so she could hear everything, right, sticking up. And all of a sudden, she heard behind her, there was a big mango tree. And she heard behind her, boom! And she said, oh no! Oh no! The world is falling apart! And she started to scream. Can you scream? Ah! And she said, the world is falling apart. And she started to run. And she started to run, run, run. And another little rabbit saw her and said, what's the matter? And she said, I can't stop. I can't stop. The world is falling apart. And she kept on screaming. Well, the other rabbit said, the world is falling apart. I better run too. So that little rabbit started to run. Then there were five rabbits. And then there were 10. Then there were 10. Then there were 20. Then there were 20. Oh, there were 30. Then 50. Then there were 100 rabbits running and screaming. Ah! Can you do it? The world is falling apart. Well, a big old bear heard them, and he said, what's going on? What's going, what's going on? on? And the rabbit said, we can't wait, we can't wait. The world is falling apart. we got to run, we got to run. And the bear said, the world is falling apart. And he started to crash through the bushes, and he was moaning, oh, no. Can you do that? Oh, no. And then another bear saw him and said, what's the matter? He said, can't stop now. World's falling apart. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, one bear saw it, another bear saw it, then five bears were doing it, then 10 bears, then 20, then 30, then 100 bears were going through the forest. Can you do it? Oh, no. And they were following the rabbits who were screaming, ah! the world is falling apart. And who should hear them? We should hear them, but an elephant. Now, the elephant was just sitting by the lake drinking some water. Its big old ears were flapping like this. And he heard a hundred rabbits and a hundred bear coming through. And he said, what is going on? They said, can't stop now, elephant, because the wall is falling apart. And the elephant said, what? Can you do that? And he trumpeted. He said, the world is falling apart. I'm a big guy. I'm going to fall in. If the world falls apart, I better get moving. So that elephant started moving. Another elephant saw him and said, what are you doing? He said, can't stop now. World's falling apart. And then another elephant and another. Then five, then 10, then 20, then 30, then 100 elephants were stampeding. And all of a sudden, a snake said, what's going on? It feels like there's an earthquake. So many things. And rabbits are running and bears are running and oh, the trumpeting. Elephants are running. And the elephant said, can't stop now, snake. The world is falling apart. Well, the snake said, well, I better start to slide. That's what I better do. So he started sliding, sliding, sliding. Another snake stopped. He said, what are you doing? Can't stop now. The world is falling apart. And five snakes, 10 snakes, 20 snakes, 30, 100 snakes start sliding, 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 sliding along. And from way up on a mountain, a big old lion looked down and said, what is going on? All those animals look really scared. What is the matter with them? I better go down and find out. And so the lion jumped up, and he was so fast he could outrun 
the snakes, the elephants, the bears, and the bunnies, and he got to the front of them, and he roared the biggest roar, and he said, stop! And they all stopped. Ah! He said, what is going on here? World's falling apart, lion, that's what's happening. Well, who told you that the world was falling apart? And the elephant said, he did, he did, he did, he did, he did. And then the last elephant said, the bear did. And the bear said, no, no, but he did, he did, he did. And they pointed. And then another one said, no, no, no. It was the rabbits that told him. He did, he did, he did. And he got to the rabbit. He said, rabbit, what happened? And the rabbit said, I was just eating some, I was just eating some grass. And I heard, boom, the whole road started to fall apart. And he said, well, where did you do that? He said, well, at the mango tree. That's where I did it. He said, hmm. Let's go back to the mango tree and see. The rest of you wait here. So he took that little rabbit on his back and he went running back to the mango tree and the lion thought he knew what happened. And indeed he was right. He said, look, here's a huge, big, delicious mango. That's what happened. So they took the mango and the rabbit and they went back to all the other animals and said, don't worry about it. It's just a mango fell out of the tree so loud it scared this little rabbit. No need to be scared, and any time you're worried, you should always check it out first before you start running. And all the animals went back to their homes, but that little rabbit sat down and ate a delicious sweet mango. And that's the story of the lion and the world falling apart. Thank you. Thank you. Well, bravo for listening, because there's no story without listeners. You know that? That is the truth. All right, so this next story comes from Japan. Japan. Yes, once there was a boy who loved to draw cats. Big cats, little cats, fat cats, skinny cats, black cats, white cats, striped cats, and spotted cats. And that's all he liked to do. Only problem was his family, they were farmers, and he was supposed to be working. So his father would say to him, Joji, can you say it like that? Joji. Everybody spoke to him like that because he was always in trouble. They would say, Joji, what are you doing? Well, you know, his family didn't have paper. They didn't have brushes. They didn't have ink. All he would do is he would take a stick and he would draw in the dirt. He would draw little cats everywhere. Big cats, little cats, fat cats, skinny cats, black cats, white cats, striped cats, and spotted cats everywhere. And his mother would say, Joji, can you do that? Joji, I told you to go get water at the stream so I can cook. And he would say, oh, I'm so sorry, honorable mother, because he stopped, of course, at the stream. There were nice big flat rocks, and he would take water, and he would take a stick, and he would draw big cats, little cats, fat cats, skinny cats, black cats, white cats, spotted cats, and stripy cats all the time. And finally, his parents said to each other, you know what? I don't think that Joji will be a farmer. We need to send him to the temple in the town. There... He will find a teacher, maybe he can learn to read and write, he can do something, maybe he'll be a priest, I don't know, but he cannot be a farmer. So the mother agreed, and the father took him into the town, and he, now he had a teacher, and his teacher gave him paper, and his teacher gave him a brush, and his teacher gave him ink, and he was supposed to learn how to write, and he would start to learn how to write, but as soon as his teacher would leave, he would take his brush, and he would take his ink, and he would draw big cats, and little cats, and fat cats, and skinny cats, and black cats, and white cats, and striped cats, and spotted cats. And the teacher would come back and say, Georgie, can you say it? Georgie. And he would say, I'm, I'm so sorry, honorable teacher. I, I'll try and do better. But as soon as the teacher would leave, he would do the exact same thing. All he would do was draw cats. And finally, his teacher said, Georgie, you need to go back to your father. You need to go back to the farm. I cannot teach you anything if you will not stop drawing cats. Well, Joji thought, you know what? I'm going to be in trouble if I go home. And he thought, there's another, there's another temple in the next town, down the valley and up the mountain in the next town. I'll go there. Maybe I can have a fresh start. Maybe I'll learn to stop drawing cats. So he went down the valley and up the mountain. When he got to the next town, it was afternoon. It was starting to get dark. And he went up to that temple, and he rang the big bell. Boom! But nobody answered. So then he looked inside. It was empty, but it was a big, big room. It was a big room as big as all you people here. It was that huge. And he went inside, and, you know, the people from the last place had let him keep his ink and his brush. 
So he had ink and brush, and he looked at all the walls, and all the walls were empty, and he thought, whoa, I can draw some cats. So he started to draw all over the walls, big cats, little cats, black cats, white cats, striped cats, polka dot cats, all kinds of cats, all over the walls, so he got to the last wall. The last wall was empty, and he decided to draw a huge cat, a cat that went from like that garbage can all the way over to that little wagon. It was huge. The head was over here, a big body, and then its long tail. And when he was done, the sun had gone down. It was kind of dark, and he thought, I should go to sleep. So he found a little tiny closet, because he didn't feel right about being outside. So he found a little tiny closet, and he opened up the door, and then he shut it. It was just a perfect space, and he fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, Something came in and boom, he heard it open the door. And then he heard big footsteps, boom, 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 boom. And then he heard something sniffing, sniffing. Oh my goodness, it was sniffing and it was getting closer and closer to where he was hiding in the closet. It was sniffing and getting closer. And then he heard, Row! and then boom, there was a huge fight right outside his door, hissing and scratching and biting and all kinds of terrible noises and tearing. And then silence. But he was too scared to look. So he waited until he could see sunlight coming through the little crack in the door. And when he saw sunlight, he slid open that door and he looked. And there on the floor of that temple was a rat that was so big it was like from here to there, as big as that stone wall. And it was on its back and its eyes were staring up sightlessly and its legs were uh, and its tongue was hanging out. It was dead. But when he looked up, he also noticed, remember I said the cat's head was over here, the big one that he drew, and the tail was over there? Well, when he looked up at that wall, the head was there and the tail was over there, and he thought, wow, thank you, honorable cat. And when the people of the town heard what he did, instead of saying, Joji, they all said, Joji, yay! Can you do that? Joji, yay! Because they said, Joji, that monster rat has been eating our chickens and eating our cows and eating our children. It's terrible. It's been driving us to madness and sadness, and you have saved us. And so Joji became their hero, and they gave him a job. He did not become a farmer, and he did not become a priest or a teacher. He became an artist. And you know what he did? He drew cats, cats, cats. Big cats, little cats, fat cats, skinny cats, black cats, white cats, striped cats, and spotted cats for the rest of his life. And that's the story of Joji, the boy who drew cats. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, this last story comes from the United States. Donna Washington likes to tell the story. She's an amazing storyteller. She also writes children's books, so you can find this. I think it's called The Big Spooky House. And it's about a big man. Can you do this? A big man, a strong man, a not afraid of anything man. Not afraid of anything man. So once there was a big man and a strong man who was not afraid of anything. And he had to walk from one town to the next on a bright summer day like this. He was walking along and it was so hot, somebody in a truck came by and slowed down and said, hey, do you need a ride? It's so hot out. Well, he was a big man. He was a strong man. He wasn't worried about any heat. He said, no, thank you. I've got this. Then the clouds came in, and it started to rain, pour rain. And it was pouring rain, and he just kept on walking because he was a big man. He was a strong man. He wasn't worried about any rain kind of man. But then it started to thunder and lightning. There was booming thunder and streaks of lightning through the sky. Well, he was a big man. He was a strong man. He wasn't worried about any thunder and lightning. But it was starting to get dark, and he hadn't gotten to the next town. So he saw this house on the side of the road with no lights on, and it looked empty. And if you saw it, or if I saw it, I would never go inside. No way. Not this house, because it had bats coming out of the broken window and the door was hanging off the side and it looked like a totally spooky, scary house. But he was a big man. He was a strong man. He wasn't afraid of any spooky looking house kind of man. So he went right into that house. Now, if it was all broken down and nasty on the outside, when he opened that door, which creaked open, can you creak? Creak! 
On the inside, it was amazing. There was beautiful polished floors with a beautiful rug going down a hallway. And then at the end of the hallway was a doorway into a dining room with a big fireplace and a nice chair next to it and a huge table that was set just for one person with every kind of good thing to eat, roast beef, baked potatoes, biscuits, butter, honey, tea, you name it, delicious. Well, he was a big man, he was a strong man. He was a hungry man, so he sat right down and he ate all of that food. And then he thought to himself, you know what? That fire looks very nice, I'm all wet. I'll see if I can't dry off and take a little rest. So, just before he fell asleep, though, he heard bong, 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 bong. It was midnight, and he fell asleep, and he was snoring, and he was dreaming about biscuits, when all of a sudden, bong! He's like, oh, what is that? He's like, oh, no, that's just the clock. That's just one o'clock. That's all that is. But then he heard, Creak. and he heard tiny little footsteps coming down the hallway and into the room came a cat a black cat with a white triangle right under its chin and the black cat came right in looked at the man went over to the fire took a bite out of a burning stick and pah, spit it out turned around and sat and looked at that man and said to him are you going to be here when John gets here? Well, he was a big man. He was a strong man. He wasn't afraid of any talking cat kind of man. He said, yeah, I'll be here when John gets here. And then some. And then he and the cat stared at each other. And finally, he fell back to sleep. And he was dreaming about roast beef, dancing with baked potatoes, when boom, boom. It's like, whoa, 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 oh, that's just the clock. That's just two o'clock. That's all that is. But then, that door opened again. And he heard footsteps coming down the hallway. And in came a cat that was so big it was up to my knees. Had the same little white triangle. It went right over to the other cat. And it stuck its tail in the fire and it didn't even burn. And it looked at the big, strong man and said, are you going to be here when John gets here? Well, he was a big man. He was a strong man. He wasn't afraid, although a little bit worried, about two talking cats. And he said, yeah, I'm going to be here. I'll be here when John gets here. And then some. Well, the two cats and the man stared at each other until he got tired again. And he fell asleep. Oh, my goodness. He was remembering that cherry pie that he had for dessert that was so good. With the bong, bong, bong. And he woke, oh my goodness, what was, oh, that's the clock, that's all. But then he heard the door creak open. And he heard big footsteps coming down the hall. And into that room came a cat that was this tall. It was as big as a small pony. It came right in and it ate up the little cat and the bigger cat and sat in the fire and put it out and looked at the man and said, are you going to be here when John gets here? Well, he was a big man. He was a strong man. He was a gone man. He went running out of that house. He went running down that road. He went running to the next town and told this story for the rest of his life. That's my story. <laughs> Thank you. So, last story. It's about a mama mice, mouse. So you guys are going to be all my little mice children, okay? And when I say something, you're going to say, yes, mama, but you're going to say it in mouse. You're going to say, squeak, squeak, squeak. Can you do that? Yeah. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Okay. So one day, mama mouse said to all of her children, children, we're going out to eat and find food out in the world. You need to listen to me and do exactly what I say when I say it, and don't move until I tell you it's okay. And they all said, yes, Mama, but they said it in mouse. They said, squeak, squeak, squeak. So Mama Mouse said, squeak, 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 squeak. Let's go. So they went out, and first they found some raspberries. Oh, they were so ripe and delicious, and they pulled them down. Mm, they were eating them. Can you eat raspberries? Delicious, fresh raspberries. Oh, it was so good. And then she saw some strawberries. She said, squeak, 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 let's go. 
So they went over to the strawberries and they were picking up the strawberries and eating strawberries and they were so good. And then she saw some acorns and she said, squeak, squeak, squeak. So they were taking the tops off of acorns and chewing on them. And then she said, squeak, 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 which is, are you thirsty? And the children all said, yes, mama. Squeak, squeak, squeak. And she said, let's go down to the stream and get a drink. So they went down to the stream and they put their little mouse lips down to the water and they went, can you do that? And then all of a sudden, Mama Mouse said, squeak, 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 which is right now, right now, you need to hide behind that rock, not make a sound, not make a move, don't do anything until I tell you. So they all ran and hid behind the rock. She went in front of the rock and she stood as tall and as strong as a mouse mama could. She stood tall and strong because she saw coming through the bushes, she saw a cat. There was a cat coming and it had its ears down. Its eyes were little slits. Its teeth were shining in the sun. Its mouth was open. It could smell mice. It could practically taste mice. It was just about to jump when Mama Mouse said, woof, 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 woof. And that scared the little cat so much, it went meow and ran away. And then Mama Mouse said to her children, skinny squeak, 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 you can come out now. And they all came out and they said, Mama, 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 what was that? What just happened there? And she said, that, my children, is an example of why it is so valuable to know how to speak two languages. So what language did Mama Mouse speak? Mouse. mouse. And what else? Mouse. And dog, exactly. So that's the story of the brave bilingual Mama Mouse. So thank you very much. Those are my stories for you. You can take these all in your heads. If you want, I'll make lions for any group that wants to take a lion home, a lion and a mouse. And Miss Karen over there has got all kinds of books, so she'll tell us how you want to do that, right? Can we please give you over here? Oh, thank you, Karen. Thank you.